welcome back to The Real Women of Coaching. My name is Dr. Amy Giddings and I'll be your host. Today we head back to the huddle in Atlanta, Georgia, where we get to speak with Heather Benning. And she's the head women's soccer coach and an athletic administrator at Grinnell College. Let's hear about Heather's sport history. Hi, I'm Heather Bunning. I'm the head women's soccer coach at Grinnell College, where I also am the assistant athletic director and an associate professor of physical education. Uh, sport is something that has been part of me as long as I can remember. I think that my first experience with sport was participating in gymnastics as a three-year-old, and um, from there, my opportunities just seem to explode. I, all I can remember doing as a kid was playing sports and was really fortunate where I grew up in, in the mountains of Colorado, the number of opportunities that I had, especially looking back, knowing what I know now, I think I was really privileged in what I was able to do as a girl growing up in the late 70s, the early 80s, and the access that I had to a variety of experiences. Uh, it started with gymnastics, as I said, uh, picked up soccer along the way, picked up basketball along the way, picked up volleyball, and all of that was before I was even in high school. And to me, it was amazing the different things I could do and the people that I met through sport. And never was it in my mind that it wasn't something other girls were able to do. Um, I was really fortunate to be coached by exclusively females at that age. And as I went to high school, I just added more sports to what I was doing, which is so counterculture right now where we're trying to get girls to focus in on one sport and boys for that matter and on one sport and hone um, their talents in that way. And so when I went to high school, I picked up cross country, I picked up softball and I was just a sports nut. I, that was a huge part of my identity. It wasn't separate from who I was. It wasn't an extracurricular, it was what I did. and. So that certainly has shaped and influenced what I'm doing now. I never thought I was going to be a collegiate coach. That wasn't what I was thinking. I, the model that I was used to was seeing teachers who also coached, and that was my initial ambition. I wanted to be a high school math teacher, and I wanted to coach, and I thought that would be my entree to continue doing what I loved um, and continue my passion for education. And so how I got where I am was just a series of open doors and uh, just absolutely amazing to think back on that um, because I couldn't have laid it out any more perfectly to get me to my point where I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. Um, so I th as I reflect on that and think about those open doors beyond just my participation and having great role models, um, certainly appreciating my mother who as a single parent got me to all these different practices and had me in every place in the state I needed to be competing and I don't know how she put together the pennies for me to go to the places I went with the Olympic Development Program and went with my USVBA volleyball team. Um, it just, those were certainly great um, support. That was great support that I got from my mother, but then the doors opened as soon as I started collegiate um, athletics. and. For me, uh, you know, my dream was to play big time soccer and I had opportunities to play division one and two, um, but my mother was a great mentor and, and brought me, kind of grounded me and got me to think about what's most important as I select a college. And I ended up picking an institution that had a great reputation academically, that had a good soccer program, a place where I could certainly make an impact early on. Uh, and it was a good fit for me for a lot of reasons. I went uh, to Cornell College for three years and was able to have a profound impact on the soccer program. Uh, I did play basketball for a couple years there, purely uh, just athletic ability, not basketball ability. Uh, hustle, hard work, uh, coachable, um, kind of a, a program player, and that was a great experience, but my heart was in soccer. And, uh, and because of that, there was 
always this one thing that I hadn't done, and that was to play soccer at a, at a higher level. And uh, as much as I appreciated the education that I was getting and uh, the social experiences that I had at a small residential college, I always wondered if I could compete at that next level. And for me at that point, you know, Division One and Two were no longer really a viable option, but there were other Division Three schools that I thought you know, I think I can compete there. I think I can contribute. And one of those happened to be a school within, you know, 90 miles of where I was. It was a superior academic institution and it was going to give me an opportunity to see how I could achieve athletically and academically and continue to push myself. So I transferred at a very atypical time. It was after three years of undergraduate schooling and uh, went to Grinnell College and had a phenomenal experience. I was, I was challenged beyond belief academically. It was the greatest experience for me. Um, just knowing that there was so much more to learn and just to be in an environment academically where you're challenged every day by the people around you. And that was extremely rewarding and it plays a lot into how I, my coaching philosophy today, um, but also athletically. It gave me an opportunity to play for a team that was a conference perennial champion, a team who had the opportunity to go to the NCAAs. And that was wonderful and even though it was very short-lived I only had one year of eligibility left it was ever it was worth it to me um, it also meant that I had one more year of residency that I needed to complete to get my degree which was not my plan I had never envisioned I would go to school for five years to get my undergraduate degree um, but what it did is it opened that first door for me because I had an opportunity in my fifth year to be part of the coaching staff and that was an amazing experience. I took that experience for everything it was worth. I moved off campus. I set the boundaries between myself and my former teammates. I recognized that that opportunity could be a door for me to get into the profession, but I needed to treat it appropriately. And it was, it was everything I wanted it to be. And it just, fueled my passion um, for being involved in athletics and it made me start to think about whether I still wanted to do that um, in my initial plan of high school coaching and teaching or whether maybe I really could be a collegiate coach like did I have what it would take to be a collegiate coach and so that that interest um, got me to reevaluate what my plan was. I had intended to return for what Grinnell calls your ninth semester. You come back and get your teaching certification this semester after you graduate. For me, that would have been my 11th semester. So part of me thought, do I really want to put in a sixth year uh, to get this teaching certification? Or there's this really wonderful university down the road uh, where Christine Grant is teaching and they have a, a great sport management program and a great athletic administration program. And maybe I should continue down this path of looking at collegiate interaction. And, um, and that's what I did. I applied to the University of Iowa uh, and spent the next two years working on my master's degree in sport management and sports psychology and continued in my role as an assistant coach at Grinnell. The next big door that opened for me is within three months of graduating from the University of Iowa, the head women's soccer coach at Grinnell shifted positions and the vacancy presented itself. Um, the positions at Grinnell for head coaches are faculty members and uh, I was going to complete my master's degree which was considered the terminal degree in our field and I therefore would be eligible to apply for this position whereas had I not gone to Iowa as much as I may have had a connection with the women on the team and with the institution I wouldn't have qualified for that and so I was part of the national search process and uh, it was a very stressful time because I, I wanted this job so deeply and I believed in the way that Grinnell balances athletics and academics and I felt like I was a great fit for the program but I was also very junior and um, and so I put a lot into that process and was just so incredibly pleased to get the offer uh, to continue at that institution at my alma mater um, doing what I love doing and in a venue I never thought 
was possible. I just didn't know that was an option growing up. As much as sports were part of me, as much as I had female role models, um, my whole concept of how you could be a woman and coach was you need to be a teacher and that would be your add-on. It would be what maybe you get an extra $2,000 to do at the high school level. Um, and to know that this could be my full-time job at a collegiate institution at my alma mater um, was absolutely amazing. And so that was just fortuitous. Um, and I fell into the series of events that led to me getting my position at Grinnell, and it's where I've been since then. I was hired as the head coach in 1998, and this fall I'll be starting my 16th season as the head coach at Grinnell. Once again, we thank you for joining us for this episode of The Real Women of Coaching, part of the Women's Coaching Network. Join us next time as Heather Benning talks about the importance of developing the whole person 